and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. Ron will not be joining us today. I've heard that he's trying out for a blue man group. Um, and I'm Jean Marie. No, he's still at work. Mm, potato, potato. <laughs> Collectively, we're the host of Podcast DX. On today's show, we're speaking with a Army veteran and patient advocate, Tanya Henry. Tanya is joining us today to talk about gastroparesis. Tanya is a disabled veteran who has many illnesses. She was diagnosed with auto autonomic dysfunction secondary to Gulf War illness. Autonomic dysfunction causes issues with things such as temperature dysregulation, hypotension, hypoglycemia, orthostatic intolerance, tachycardia, and gastroparesis. She has some other diseases that impact her life as well, but today we're focusing on gastroparesis. This is Gastroparesis Awareness Month, and she received the Gastroparesis Awareness Month proclamation from the mayor of Killeen, Texas, on August 9th, 2022, <laughs> she volunteers as an OLE ambassador, which is someone who advocates and helps those with gastroparesis or other GI illnesses that require a feeding tube, TPN, IV nutrition, or an ostomy bag. She has had a je jejunal feeding tube? Yes. Jejunal? Okay, I said that right. A, G a GJ tube and currently a G-tube to vent drain only. She relies on TPN now for all of her nutrition and gets through a port, gets that through a port. She also has a gastric stimulator and a cardiac monitor implanted. She is also active in the migraine community as well and writes and moderates for migraine.com. You can find her Oli ambassador information and we'll put the link on our website. And her gastroparesis story was featured by a local news station back in 2019. And I'll put a link for that on our website as well. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tanya. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank and you. Boy, you've, I mean, it's, it's hard being a veteran. It's hard being a woman veteran, but boy, oh boy. You have been through the ringer and then some, um, so we we really do appreciate you taking the time because it, it must be yes. challenging. Um, could you start us off by telling us exactly what is gastroparesis? Yes. Gastroparesis is a delayed emptying of the stomach, and the gastroparesis word itself actually means paralyzed stomach. Okay. There can be partial or complete paralysis, just depends on the person's body. Mm -hmm. It is considered a motility disorder. People with gastroparesis have a difficult time eating food or drinking because the food is not moving as it should through the stomach. It can cause symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, early satiety, bloating, constipation, malnutrition, weight loss abdominal pain, and bowel obstructions. And this disease is more common in women. There currently is no cure, but there are a few treatments or medications that can be used to ease the symptoms. Yeah, that's that's very intense. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a lot to deal with. Yeah, life-changing. And what yes. Sim yes, what symptoms first led you to seek medical care, and was it difficult for your healthcare team to diagnose this condition? For me, yes, it was. It actually took me about 17 years oh, to wow. get a proper wow. diagnosis. Wow. Yes. And uh, it started with me having severe abdominal pain, nausea, constipation. And so, you know, I first went to the TMC, the mm -hmm. Troop Medical Clinic. And a lot of the time, the doctors, they're not going to suspect gastroparesis you know, because they don't deal with it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I was given the standard regimen of Pepto-Bismol, anti-nausea medicine, such as Zofran, right. and things like Colace, a stool softener, or mm -hmm. Miralax. 
And I was told that it was just constipation or it's just a virus. So no one did any definitive tests back then. And I think I remember my first testing for anything was back in the mid nineties. And that was just an x-ray that showed my abdomen was full of stool. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm once again, so sorry, but it, it sounds very familiar. Yeah. Just, yes. yeah, it's kind of put a bandaid on it and yeah, move on. Um, mm-hmm. So how, so they had these, the x-ray showing that you're, you know, that you obviously aren't processing food through the system as usual. Did that allow them to make a diagnosis or did you have to go under, did you have to have more <laughs> testing? A lot more testing. Okay. No, they, um, I can remember this was around 96. Okay. Um, they just was like, take this, you know, you're very constipated. Your stool is backed up Mm -hmm. and it'll get better. That was it. I just had a whole lot of symptoms, Mm -hmm. you know, but I was not vomiting a lot back then, Okay. but I did have a lot of abdominal pain and nausea and, you know, just like many with gastroparesis, I did stay constipated a lot. And uh, I had issues actually running in oh, formation. Sure. Yes. <laughs> it, it wasn't until later that, you know, they did things such as an upper GI, a barium enema, more x-rays, a barium swallow, endoscopies, colonoscopies. And, you know, like a lot of people, they said, you have IBS. And oh. that was it. Yes. Wow. Mis- yes. Misdiagnosis uh, is, is a big problem. Well, yeah. And I, I guess um, I can picture, you know, when you're trying to run and your stomach is full, how do you breathe? Oh, yeah. It's, it's pushing on your on your lungs, right? Oh. Yes. yes. Very hard. What, what would you say the biggest misconception is with gastroparesis? I think it would be doctors telling you that gastroparesis is not serious. Oh, you know, I've had, yes, I've had a doctor tell me that, yes, there's no cure, but at least you can't die from it. <gasps> but yes, <laughs> gastroparesis is, it's very complicated and yeah. it can cause <sighs> things such as failure to thrive, yes. mm-hmm. bowel obstructions, severe malnutrition, and people can die from those. Sure. Or if you have a line, you can get sepsis and die from sepsis. So anytime, you know, you have anything in your body, you're at a risk of sepsis. Sure. So I have a port, a G tube, a gastric stimulator for gastroparesis. So yes, there is a risk. Oh yeah. But you know, I do everything I can to minimize that. And no, um, I posted just yesterday on my Facebook page, just a statistic Mm -hmm. showing people that people with gastroparesis can die from it. And Mm -hmm. this year we've lost 25 people in my gastroparesis group. Oh, right. I I follow a uh, a Facebook group as well on gastroparesis. And I often see that little candle lit up, you know, we lost another angel. I'm like, my God, it's terrible. Yes. Terrible. It is. Yeah. I guess they really do need to, um, you know, have more than a two minute brief about it in medical school and really yeah talk more about it right yeah these Definitely. people that are th- these doctors that are saying oh well you know that's so serious but mm-hmm. they need to be uh, schooled yes tanya how have your healthcare team cho- you say you're talking about the tubes that you've had and you've had so how have they chosen to treat your gastroparesis over the years now that you've gotten that diagnosis finally Well, the first thing that my doctor did at the VA was Mm -hmm. put me on Reglan in 2014. Okay. And I tried that for about a year and a half. Reglan. We stopped it. Yes. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Yep. All right. We stopped that, though, because I started having Parkinson-like symptoms, you know, twitching in my face, involuntary movements in the arms and legs, which, you know, it is known for causing tardive dyskinesia. Mm -hmm. And that can be permanent if you do not stop it when you start having those symptoms. So after I start losing a lot of weight and vomiting more, I was approved for the gastric (laughs) stimulator in 2016. Okay. Okay. That worked for about a year. Okay. And after that wasn't doing so well, 
and I started losing more weight, my doctor added the J tube or the jejunal feeding tube mm -hmm. in 2017. And then I did regain a lot of weight, but about a year and a half into that, starting having more tolerance, absorption issues mm. and pain. Mm. So then we went from that to TPN mm -hmm. September, 2019. Mm. So I've tried a lot of different medicines, a lot of anti-nausea medicines. Mm -hmm. And currently I use a lot of IV meds, you know, to help with my nausea and stuff. Okay. Okay. And boy, yeah, that's, again, rough. And I'm sure you do remember the day that you switched over to TPN because that is such a huge lifestyle change. Oh, um, yes. Oh, Tanya, it sounds like this condition has significantly affected your day-to-day -day life. Um, and Lita, my mother, and I both know from personal experience how challenging the Veterans Administration Disability Rating System can be in the simplest of situations. How has the process been for you? It was hard. Um, I actually just got approved and had my gastroparesis service connected back in 2019. Okay. But I filed many years ago, mm -hmm. you know, under um, undiagnosed go for illness, and it should have been approved mm -hmm. for at least IBS. But even though they said I had IBS, they still denied it. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so this uh, person that does claims told me that should have been approved back when you applied in the early 2000s. Okay. So I reapplied and it was finally granted. And um, I, I'm personally, I think that if you have gastroparesis and you rely on two feeds 24 seven mm -hmm. or IV nutrition, then you should be at 100% just yes. for that condition. Yes. Right? Yes. But currently, the highest rating is only 60% for 60. that. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. That is, that's shocking. Yeah. And did you, is. did you get a uh, retroactive disability pay? Not back to 2005 or seven when I applied for it. No, they only, I think backdated it for about six months. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, add it to the list. Yes, yes. <clears throat> yeah, they, they really need to have significant improvements uh, to the system. Mm -hmm. But one element of your patient advocacy is a concerted effort to improve the VA rating systems for veterans. And we're, <laughs> we're definitely going to support you on that one. Yes, Tell us about that. Yes, you know, Anytime I see a bill is up for review and mm -hmm. they ask for the community or the veterans input, mm -hmm. I email them and tell them my story. I have been reaching out to state representatives to ask them to help co-sponsor or sponsor a bill. Mm -hmm. I have sent letters to the VA. I have actually mailed packets, informational packets to different hospitals in my area. I've sent it to my VA the military hospital here and other local hospitals because it's it's not right you know i've mm -hmm. gone to the er and the doctor's like well what is a gastric stimulator or what is gastroparesis oh. and he would have to look it up because he's oh. never had a patient come to the er with it oh that's so terrifying it is and you know i'm a person who i post a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and ask people i say hey this is up for a vote mm -hmm. you know they need your support so reach out to these people the more people that express to them that it's a problem the more likely it will be that they would sponsor it mm -hmm. and um the disabled vet american veterans the dev they have the commander's action network so people can sign up and they will alert you when there is pending legislation. And so, you know, a lot of times you put in your name, your address, your email, and they have this letter <clears throat> that is already set and they'll okay. email it to your state representative. So that's an easy way. You don't have to make your own letter. They just add your name and email to it and you'll get an email back stating from your, your representative. Right. Thank mm -hmm. you for contacting Senator mm -hmm. so-and-so. We mm -hmm. value your input, that kind of stuff. Okay. 
Well, that's something. I mean, yes, we got Everybody's got to take a step somewhere. Right, and that's something that yeah, we everybody can, all do. can do. Yes, right. absolutely. Well, we'll definitely put links for that on our website yes. as well, and we'll sign up. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, um, Tanya, do you any alternative therapies such as like acupuncture, heat, ice, or anything like that help you or make you feel more comfortable? Even. That's a good question. Yes, um, I think it depends on what area is affected. Okay. Uh, for my gastroparesis pain, mm -hmm. I love my heat. Okay. Heating pads are great, and I actually keep it on my bed. Mm -hmm. um, for other types of pain, I've tried lots of things in the past, like occupational therapy, mm -hmm. ultrasound, acupuncture all over. Mm -hmm. I tried ice and heat and okay. stuff, but the heat is best for me. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, and what are some of the less apparent parts of your life that are affected by gastroparesis now that you're not in the military? <laughs> I mean, yeah. back in the military, running, that would be a, a big problem. Well, but, yeah, but it sounds like oh, every yes. minute. Every, yeah, I know, but, you know, you don't think about it. You know, right, something. right. Yes. One thing that a lot of people with gastroparesis are impacted by is food. Mm -hmm. You know, um, most people don't consume full meals. Some are on liquid diets, some are on soft food diets, mm -hmm. some are MPO like me. I don't consume any meals, but I do find it very calming to bake, oh, bake goods. Okay. So, and I, I cook occasionally for my son who's in his early twenties that lives here, but baking, when I'm having a semi good day, mm -hmm. baking helps bring joy to me because I love to bake and I can smell it. I don't have to eat it. Okay. Just smelling it makes me happy. Okay. Oh. And music also. I love okay. music, so I'm always listening to music. We just talked to a, uh, a doctor an hour ago, a functional cardiologist, mm -hmm. and what he was talking about was functional medicine um, has such a big impact on all aspects of life and he's yes. talking about find something that brings you joy yes. and and use it to your benefit and yeah. you're doing just the right things yeah that's... yes i agree with that yes because it's, it's easy to get depressed mm -hmm. and i have seen a lot of people depressed and unfortunately in our gastroparesis group i have seen suicide as well so I say, if you have something that brings you joy, do it. And if you don't have something, find a hobby. Mm -hmm. Find something that brings yeah. you joy, right. Everybody yes. can find something. Good idea, yeah. good suggestion. That's wonderful. And I, and I guess I, I will say, and it must have been exceptionally difficult knowing in your heart that something was going on and that something was wrong and then being told, you know, <laughs> just take some Pepto-Bismol yeah, and it'll all yeah. be okay. So right. um, yes. yeah, that's... That's, you are an inspiration, and we appreciate you sharing your story because of that. Um, Thank you. Tanya, what inspired you to be a patient advocate? I think um, I've just always been a person who likes helping others. Mm -hmm. And um, in high school, I volunteered as a limeade, which is sort of like a candy striper. Okay. Then, you know, in the military, I was going to come in as a nurse, but mm -hmm. there were no medical jobs available, but I did commo. Okay. After the military, I actually went to school for medical lab technician. So after I stopped working as a CNA, mm -hmm. I ended up continuing to be a friend with my home client okay. for years. She used to call my kids her, her adopted grandkids. Aww. And yes, so after that, I started volunteering with uh, EFMP, a special needs camp for Fort Hood. Okay. And I used to do sponsorship for Relay for Life. And now, you know, I just advocate for all kinds of illnesses out there. Yeah. Okay, excellent. That's amazing. And what support have you gotten during your healthcare journey? Obviously not much from the VA. Uh, what role have your family and friends played? They've generally been very supportive. Anytime I'm doing like an online fundraiser, mm -hmm. my friends will, they'll help out. If there's something that I ask people to share, mm -hmm. they will share it on their pages. Um, I've had people 
volunteer to take me to appointments, surgeries. I am in multiple groups such as gastroparesis, a women's veterans group, and just whenever I'm involved with something, Mm -hmm. you know, I reach out to my friends and they always tend to help me. Excellent. That's amazing. I think because you're such a giving person, it People sounds like you've surrounded, help. yeah, you've surrounded. And that's, and yeah. that's another thing that that doctor says. Yes, yes. Yes. So, yeah. You, you When you put the good energies out, the good energies come right. back to you. And yeah. Yes. Um, Tanya, what do you do to help reduce day-to-day stress? Um, well, no, like we mentioned before. Yeah. Baking. Baking and singing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Those are my two big things. And then I have uh, ties to a church here okay. and... I think for me, just mm-hmm. having strong faith and praying mm-hmm. and journaling also. Oh. Yes, I, I journal occasionally, not every day, okay. but I do journal. And I follow this person who says that every day you should try to think of at least three things that you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. He does like a, a gratitude journal. Mm-hmm. And so, I try to do that, think of things. And he's like, think of things that people don't even think about. Just think about like the rain that we've just Mm -hmm. recently got here, or think about just the ability to breathe and, you know, Mm -hmm. or walk without problems or whatever it is, you Mm -hmm. know, be thankful that you have a family, a Mm -hmm. car to drive, Mm -hmm. right? Just different things like that. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. And with everything that you've got going on, I mean, like just, you know, we, just medically, yeah, it's medically, intense. you have a, a very, yeah, you have, you have very a very full. full schedule. Yes. How do you find time for self care, and how do you have a work life balance? Well, I, I know personally that taking time or making time for self care is very important. You have to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while, but I have learned that it is okay to say no to people Mm -hmm. and just relax. Mm -hmm. Don't be stressed about making events. If you don't feel like going and you feel like it's going to be a burden, don't go. Stay home, relax, take a bubble bath, enjoy a movie, listen to the breeze or the wind outside. Mm -hmm. You have to find something that is good for you. Um, and then I also, I try to schedule things and remember, okay, at this time I have this, I'm going to do this, call this person at this time. Mm-hmm. So I put reminders on my phone and okay. my calendar because mm-hmm. scheduling things is better for me. I like to put everything on a schedule. Mm-hmm. Keep mm-hmm. you organized. Yeah. And, and very, um, maybe a holdover from the military or yeah. one of the reasons <laughs> you were in the military. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Tanya, what advice do you have for someone who is just entering the VA system um, and getting their health care and benefits through the VA? I would say um, ask questions. And if you have someone who's been going to the VA a long time, mm-hmm. see if they will take you and possibly show you around. Okay. There's different Facebook groups that you can join that yeah. people can give you information about, you know, how to get things going at the VA. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, sometimes a lot of information isn't shared because when I started going to the VA, I didn't know that you qualified for travel pay. And until someone told me just this random person just (laughs) asked me the question and I said no, and he showed me how to do it. So a lot of things too may be offered. Mm -hmm. Like my local VA has adaptive sports, music therapy and there are certain items you can get like i have a paraffin wax wax uh machine from the va Uh that i use and i've shared that in my women's veterans group because Uh people did not know if you have certain problems you qualify for that machine okay excellent yeah right you never know right no you never know and you gotta ask you're right you're right well before we wrap up the episode Could you please tell us what additional tips, hints, or advice you have for somebody that's been recently diagnosed with a chronic illness? I would say if you are online, Mm -hmm. find an online support group. Okay. Uh, There are groups for any and everything out there. Do your research. Do Mm -hmm. your own personal research because your doctor is not going to know everything 
He may not know all of the medicines or treatments that are out there. Mm -hmm. I bring stuff to my doctors all the time and print it out, Mm -hmm. share that information with them. Also, sometimes, you know, if you can't afford a treatment, Mm -hmm. check into your your group or like a a chronic pain group or something. There's financial support Mm -hmm. programs out there. Just connect with people who have your illness because they can share information or share a doctor network with Mm -hmm. you also. You all know who Mm -hmm. are the best doctors for your own illnesses. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Why waste time going to people? That right. Aren't You're right. To right. You. Right. Or don't have never heard of it before. <laughs> what, wow. What, True. What oh. a stimulator. Yeah. <laughs> that that's wonderful advice. Thank you so much, Tanya. <clears throat> we really, really ap- appreciate you taking the time to join us today, especially when you're not feeling 100%. Um, how can our listeners learn more about you and your advocacy? They can follow me on the different sites that I'm on. Okay. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm Tanya Henry on LinkedIn and. I'm on The Mighty also, and I'm on a site called Social Health Network. Okay. It used to I be We Go Health, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I uh, I also have uh, videos. I, I make a few videos on YouTube, but if you go to my channel, you'll see like some other podcasts. I think um, me getting the proclamation from the mayor is on there. Um, just different stuff like that. And if they want to read about my migraine articles, Mm -hmm. then you can go to my link for that. And all of my articles for migraine.com will be on the site under the patient advocate area. Okay. And my Oli information stuff is on the Oli ambassadors site. Okay. Or that tab. Right. Um, Oli.org. Okay. Yeah, and we'll have links for all of right. those on our on our page for this episode as right. well. Right. I got my work cut out for me this yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Tanya. Yeah, we really appreciated it. Um, you taking the time, and um, we know there's a lot more to your story, and it's very complicated and complex. Yeah, maybe we can maybe we can get you on again in the future to talk about uh, another aspect of your of your disabilities yeah um golf yes. course syndrome especially right. and everything yeah. right yes that would be great thank you thank you um yeah thank you thank you thank you uh if our listeners have any questions or comments related to today's show they can contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com through our website podcastdx.com on facebook twitter pinterest tiktok or instagram And if you have a moment to spare, please give us a review wherever you get your podcast. As always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, and always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment before undertaking a new healthcare regime, and never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because it's something you've heard on this podcast. Till next week.